right, welcome back to the K Craftsman YouTube channel. Today we got a smaller project. We're building a mug holder. And let me show you the basic design so far. Okay, so here's the basic idea of this mug holder. It's gonna be about this tall. It's gonna be able to hold eight mugs. And it's stacked with ash and white oak. Now this was eight quarter white oak and white and ash that I bought to use for this project. And so basically it's gonna be like this and the device that's gonna hold the mugs will be a dowel. Not this thick, probably like a half inch dial dowel or like a quarter inch dowel, but it'll run through the, so it'll stick out the sides of this. You know, it'll only be that long. And the mugs can hang off of it four sides and then along the top. Now this is how I originally was gonna just build this, uh, but I decided to cut off these little corners at an angle so that everything flows together geometrically. So there's not a really hard 90 degree angle rate on these corners here. Um, and then it'll just have a square base with probably a 45 chamfer all the way around. And yeah, so uh, we're in the stage now of cutting these little uh, just nubs off of the uh, blocks to give it that nice smooth transition. So let me show you what I got set up on the table saw. All right, so here on the table saw I have um, my miter gauge for cross cutting with uh, just a strip of wood here at a 90. That's just what I always have on here, but I've added, you'll see here, this little sled that will hold these blocks at a 45 degree while I make a 45 degree uh, cross cut on these to give us that shape that we want. If you look closely on this piece of wood here, this is the kind of shape we're going after. We're going to cut at a 45 straight like that. So we have the piece set in here and we'll use that cut to each of our lines and it'll make sense once I cut it out so let me do a few and I'll show you So here you could kind of see what I'm talking about with uh, making those cuts on the corner so that when we stack the next piece on top, it's a nice smooth transition and it'll have it on the top side of this too so that that line will kind of continue through the piece and I think it's going to look really cool. So you can see what I'm talking about here of cutting those corners off so we have a more interesting shape rather than just squares. So the next step here is to, well, uh, connect everything. I'm thinking just to drill a hole to the center of all of these so that it lines up and then we just connect everything with the dowel. And then, you know, we'll build the base and connect that that way. Also, we have to add the dowels here. It's going to be on the ash. I'm going to go get a white oak dowel. Or I could just make a dowel. I'm just going to make a dowel on the lathe. So, let's do that. So 
we're back at the lathe and I was gonna drill these holes with the drill press but then I figured this would work should work pretty well in the lathe so I just chuck these into this uh, bowl turning chuck there yeah and then we just drill a hole through okay so yeah this is how this will work here uh, we get at the top one the middle pieces will have a through hole all the way in it it'll go on to that like that the next one up onto it uh, yeah we're just gonna drill the next two holes in the oak pieces we got the ash ones done and uh, we could start assembling this now time to glue it up So we've taken out of the clamps and now it is time to make the pieces that will actually hold the muck. So those are going to be just a square dowel here attached like that. So we'll cut these to length and cut tenons on uh, one end of all these pieces and then we'll cut a mortise into each four sides of the ash using a drill bit and a chisel. So let's do it. So I've cut everything to length here on the table saw, just using this miter gauge with the little stop block. And I've lowered my blade so it is a quarter inch, sticking a quarter inch up. These are three quarter uh, inch squares. So if we take a quarter inch off the top side, bottom side, front side, back side, that'll leave us with a quarter inch tenon. So I just use this carpenter's pencil. These are quarter inch, set my saw. where it meets that. Now on my stop block here I'm just gonna mark it and move it a half inch towards the blade and that will be the shoulder for our tenon. I'll go around and cut each side and then I'll remove the block and then just cut the rest of the tenon out. Okay, so uh, originally I was just, you know, going back and forth and cutting the tenons horizontally like this, but I decided to make a little jig here so I can cut it vertically to save time because I have eight of these to do and there's four sides on each, so that adds up to a lot of time. So I quickly threw together this little thing here. Uh, now I'll come closer and show you what it does. Okay, so here's how this jig works. I take the piece We have the shoulder cut Done and the depth of the tenon and we set the stop block here so that it cuts Just that little bit off of the depth of the tenon. So it's about an eighth inch and we stand it up here now you could run this through without this but I have to keep my fingers kind of a little too close to the blade for me and because this isn't on a sled, if this grabs at all, it can tilt. And since we're sliding it on the table, you see like that? Definitely do not want that to happen. It can be a little dangerous here. So I've made this, and it basically clamps on the back. It fits tight to the back of the uh, miter gauge here. And this piece here pushes the piece tight to the stop block. And then we have this front piece here which holds it tight this way so that it can't move at all. So when we get the piece here, we just lock that in. I just lock that in, push everything down. My hands are on top of everything. I don't have my fingers in front of it here, close to the blade. 
so my hands are on top of everything and we just run it through like that move it twist it run it back through so that means four passes on the piece just four sides instead of going three passes to hog all of this out the way we were doing it, which would be 12 passes per piece so it really cuts the time in half and throwing this together took no time at all just some thick CA glue and some accelerant and it is does exactly what I need to do so let's get cutting So as you can see this method is a lot faster compared to the very first way I was doing it. And so sometimes you just have to think of different way of uh, cutting things to give a better result. Now you know we could have ran it through flat but put the dado stack on but then we had to change the blade out and put the dado stack on. And for this I just wanted to not have to mess with changing the blade or anything. So cutting it like this works fine and now if I ever decide to make these again I have this holder here to cut the tenons uh, for a three-quarter piece so if I'm ever making tenons on three-quarter by three-quarter stock this piece will help me to hold everything in place so let's cut the rest of them and we'll move on to the mortising All right, so I have uh, the locations marked out for the mortises, and these are going to sit at a diagonal. They're not gonna sit square to it, they're gonna sit at a 45. So I've marked out the middle of each of the pieces and then the length from the top down that I want these to be cut. Now I could have and maybe should have cut these before assembling this piece, um, but too late for that, so we're just going to Draw out these holes with a half inch hole and then we'll use a chisel to cut the diagonals. cut these I pair them up with a piece and number it um, everything should be almost the same but it's always good to number things and put things exactly back how you had it so that way when you go to do, do the glue up if there's a piece that's just a little bit off you're not scrambling to try and find oh which piece went where if you number everything keep everything the exact same when you do a dry fit it'll turn out a lot better and you won't have any problems gluing up So I'm sanding with gloves on just because um, I'm sanding by hand and my hands tend to sweat a lot. So all the sweat and dirt coming from my hands, I don't want it to get onto the wood and stain the wood more. As you can see, this piece looks a lot darker and more yellow than this piece and that's because I've been constantly working with it with my hands. So I want to keep my hands off of it and my oils and stuff off my hands. Excuse me, not off my hands, off the piece itself when I'm sanding here. So that's why I got the gloves on. Now it probably would have been a smarter decision to cut all the mortises before I assemble the four pieces together. 
and then I would be able to individually sand the pieces. But you live and learn. So next time, if I make this again, I'll definitely sand and cut all the mortises and maybe even attach them and glue it up before I do the final glue up of the whole thing. Um, but like I said, you live and you learn. So we'll keep on hand sanding. All right, so I got the piece sanded. Uh, gonna glue the tenons in and build a little base for it. And after everything is dry, we'll do a quick final sand and just spray a clear coat on this. So we are nearing the finish line. So you might be wondering how do I know which one is which when I have sanded everything. I wrote the numbers on the bottom here, so that way we know where every one goes. So here it is, completely finished. Holds eight mugs pretty well. Nice uh, countertop kind of little piece. This project was cool. Got to use different uh, techniques of building that I don't normally use in my everyday furniture making. Um, for instance, the lathe work with the through holes to connect all these together. Haven't really done that before, so that was cool to do. And the mortise and tenon stuff, don't do that too often, so that was uh, also fun experience to just try out and do just try different techniques and you know improve your skills by just building things so that's kind of what this project was all about um so yeah this is this cool interesting geometrically slightly complicated mug holder so if you've enjoyed this process and this project leave a like comment down below what you think subscribe if you feel so inclined to do so and please share this video with your friends and family helps out the channel a ton and we really appreciate it and so yeah we'll see you next time in the next build video